Yar, shiver me timbers, batten down the hatches, and where's the rum? Where's all the rum gone? What are you doing? Show theme. I mean, you never throw in anything funny, so someone has to be entertaining around here. Except the theme for this show is not pirates. It's not? No. So what is it? No, we're, we're talking about whales. Like from Hell's Heart, I Stab at the Whales? No, no, no. Gaming whales. Do they make aquatic Xboxes? Cats. I can still hear you, you know. A lot of people knew exactly where I was going at the end of the last show, and I'm not one to disappoint. For those of you who weren't here, last week I was talking about how the microtransaction model of game profits has basically been turned into a gambling scheme. It's why the word microtransaction is avoided by so many games right now. J just saying the word makes people avoid your game. And yet, microtransactions are still there. The model still works. And even though I'd like to think that people are smart and they can see through those things, enough people actually do buy in, and I mean that literally. And when you look at how the model works, it's incredibly messed up. This is going to be primer level stuff here, so keep that in mind. Also, I'm going to be talking about MMOs and multiplayer games for the most part, so keep that in mind too, okay? Alright. So, in an MMO and a game like that, what are you actually selling? Well, the game, obviously, but you're also selling a massive multiplayer online experience, and you're also selling things like trinkets and boosts and things like that so that you can get more powerful more quickly and you can level up faster, right? Yeah. And with that in mind, we get to our two extreme player types. I'll start with the leeches, and that's not the official term for these players, but I really think that's what the game devs call us when they think we're not watching. At least the nice things they call us. When an MMO of any kind is free to play, there's going to be a large player base who will say thank you very much and play your game for free, or as much of it as they can play until they hit a paywall. These are your leeches. They get into a game with zero intention of ever paying a dime to the game developer, and they'll play until they get bored, until they hit a segment that requires spending money, or they'll just bail. Or they'll just play what little small area they have access to, and whatever the game lets them play. Either way, they do nothing but take up resources on the game server. So I'll admit, I'm a leech. I'm sorry, but I'm poor. A lot of my money lately goes to things that keep me alive. You don't want to know what the cost of insulin is if you don't have proper insurance, and don't even get me started on blood testing supplies. <sighs> Okay, so on the other end of the scale, you've got your whales. The whale player is someone who spends a large amount of money on a game. And how much is that can be? It depends on the title, really. In a collectible card game, it could be as little as $100 a month consistently. In an MMO, it could be in the thousands. You remember that article I was showing you last week about the Chinese online games? Yeah, those target whale players, and it's why they make their players sink $10,000 or more into them. The percentage of whales is very, very small. I've seen it put anywhere between 1 and 5% of the player base, but their money can make or break a title with a consumable cash shop. Every ongoing title fights to grab, and for that matter, keep, their whales, and they will bend over backwards to do anything for these whales. I have read stories from gamer whales where they get a special phone number that they can talk to a dev team member if something goes wrong. Now what's funny to me is that the term whale is actually used in the casino world to describe the same kind of player and for the same reasons. Casinos will also bend over backwards to comp whales with things like free rooms, free meals, and so on just to get them to spend money gambling in their house. It's a cost-benefit ratio kind of a thing because comping a whale a nice room for a night is nothing compared to when they drop 25 grand on a blackjack table. Okay, so more in a gaming sense here, it's worth their time to dedicate employees to keep the whales happy because they're going to stay with the game and they're going to keep on spending money. So they'll keep the whales happy at the expense of making their leeches miserable. And actually from here we get to one of the ironies of this situation. An MMO cannot exist without the leeches. Remember the Mebs incident from a while ago? Had I been a $500 a month player, that incident would have never happened, or if it did, they would have been falling all over themselves apologizing afterwards. But since I'm just a $15 a month scrub, Daybreak felt like it was acceptable to abuse me as a player because I was disposable to them. Whales are not disposable, but leeches are. Even $15 a month leeches, because in theory, well, that's all they're going to spend. So for them, it's an acceptable loss. But let's take a step back. I asked at the beginning of this show, what does an MMO sell? trinkets, consumable vanity items, and a massively multiplayer experience. And where do you think that multiplayer experience comes from? So with that in mind, what happens when you drive all the leeches off of your game? Well, you've just lost a big portion of your world population. And this means people who remain are going to have longer time spent in matchmaking, less opponents for PvP, smaller population for auction house sales, and so on. 
So we have this absolutely insane model of business. Let's be very generous here. 5% of the players are funding a game and they are getting catered to. In turn, the industry seems happy to abuse or ignore those not in the 5%, and then they complain when their game crashes and burns as their leech player base leaves. This is absolute insanity. And before you start banging on your keyboards, yeah, yeah, I know, hashtag not all game devs. I've got a friend of mine who plays The Secret World, and those devs actually seem to treat everybody equally. But I say this from the outside looking in, so take that as you will. Up to now I've been talking about MMO culture, but what about free-to-play games? And when I say free-to-play, I'm talking with air quotes so big they don't actually fit within frame. Yeah, these games exist on whale meat. Candy Crush, do I need to say anything more than that? But this actually leads to a rather uncomfortable topic in this. Is this intentional? It's uncomfortable because it leads to an even more discomforting thought for gamers. Are we being manipulated? And at the risk of drifting into tinfoil hat territory, I think we are. I also think these games are doing it intentionally. It actually has to even call some of these things games for that matter. Candy Crush, and in fact all the social media games, they basically prey on the player's natural tendencies. Gamers are generally impatient, and we'd rather pay a dollar than wait 24 hours to respawn, or wait for something to happen. I mean, it's only a buck, right? But over time, that grows. Or the game hooks us and then starts subtly needing money, or friends that you can tag and add into their database, or a host of other viral things just to spread out. And it feels organic while you're doing it. Yeah. How many people suddenly found themselves $500 down over Candy Crush and then tagging everyone on Facebook or spamming to try to get a whatever they can? A lot. And these game companies cannot feign ignorance. At least not to me. I mean, I've watched them do these subtle shifts, what they reward, going after specific players and specific communities. No, this is intentional. They are pulling these techniques directly out of the Skinner box and then using them in their games. And they know it. And it's just going to keep on happening. So is there any kind of a real workaround for this? Not really. Not under the current state of affairs. Look, money buys privilege and power. It's true in the real world. It's even more true in the virtual one. Especially when a company sees its players as either a paycheck or an annoyance. Games are going to go after the whales, and they're going to either try to drive off the leeches or force them to pay. Or even worse, I can see them doubling down sooner or later. Day one or on disc DLC, mandatory post-purchases to unlock stuff. Just wait. They'll find ways to milk more out of your $80 titles. So, if I can talk to the devs for just a moment. First of all, if you're going to offer a service for free, don't be surprised when people take you up on the offer. Especially, you can't even be mad at them either, because you're offering it for free! Your job is to sell me on your product, not carrot and stick me into buying a promise. Make me love your game for the game and not for your engagement techniques. Turn me into a customer, not a cash cow. But also understand that a lot of us are in um, interesting circumstances and we might not be able to pay you immediately and others aren't even going to pay you at all. If you give it away, you can't be shocked when we take it. On the other hand, for the players, if you support the games you like, I think that's going to go very far. I mean, buy a stupid trinket in the store if you can, or show the game devs some money support. And, and go back a few shows, Go to, do some ancillary services, like do some wiki stuff, or stream the game. Yeah, we're not all whales, but we can do what we can to help out. There's, um... There's one other thing that at least I need to hang a lampshade on here. Um, I'm really hesitant to do this because this really goes into a deep topic. Um, players can be turned into accidental whales because of the cash shops and because of the microslot techniques and because of the Skinner box stuff. But when I start talking about that, it takes this very dangerous turn into um, the A word. If I can ever do the topic justice sometime down the road, I will. I suppose the next thing you're going to do is tell me that the game Watch Dogs is not about furries. Good night, everybody.